Pierre Olaf, many thanks for taking the time for this interview. Um, the future power systems will be very different than what we observe today. There is an increasing penetration of these local energy resources, including not only distributed generation, but also local energy storage or electric vehicles or active demand. So what are the challenges for distribution system operators? Also when, for instance, moving from this passive grid operation to an active system management? No, this is, I, I think, this is a remarkable development that we are, that we are watching here. Uh, the European energy policies on renewables, on energy efficiency and on greenhouse gases, together with the deregulation of the market and also the in integration of the electricity and energy markets in Europe is really changing everything. Um, the, especially the renewables, uh, where you can see that most of them are going into the distribution network, is really uh, changing what we have seen uh, so far. So introducing a huge need for flexibility in the local networks because from the passive, as you said, and mostly rad uh, radial networks uh, built on copper uh, uh, is now changing because with all these new renewables uh, the networks needs to be built as a mesh network in order not to make it too expensive and there is a lot of renewables going in. So we see uh, reverse flows. We can see uh, uh, an increase in voltage challenges. We can also see bottlenecks, local bottlenecks that we haven't had before. Earlier, we could see bottlenecks on the TSO level, but not on the DSO level. So, and the DSO is core to this development, mm -hmm. empowering uh, consumers with smart metering, giving them the possibility to, s to really see what they are using and to make active choices. Very, very important. But also integrating the solar and the wind power, the electric vehicles, as you said, and also taking into account storage possibilities mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the network. So all of this together creates a huge need for investments, first of all. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, and I will come back to that. The second thing is that the DSO is uh, the core developer here, focusing uh, regarding the smart grids. They are uh, in charge of most of the projects we see on, 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 on smart grids. So it's developing uh, also the role of the DSO. And uh, the last part uh, is uh, there is a huge need to test new solutions uh, in order to go from uh, the old passive and predictable system and take into account the huge need for capacity and especially flexibility. So these are the, the general uh, challenges that we can see. Mm -hmm. And regarding the regulation, so why is the regulator so important here? Well, Europe is different than most other markets because, first of all, we have the unbundling between, on the one hand, side generation and, and sales of electricity. On the other hand, the transport of electricity with the transmission and the distribution networks. And this makes it so much different than most other markets. And uh, this means that the regulator needs to be involved. Every single business case that we are looking at from a DSO point of view needs to take the regulator into account because it's regulated business. Mm. So what do we need? What is needed to, to, to take this forward? You know, first of all, there is a need to change the setup in the regulation from looking at only operational costs and investing in copper to incentivizing the smart investments in smart solutions, also allowing new solutions. And here I would like to highlight the possibility for the DSO to 
to balance the system locally when you have capacity problems, bottlenecks, and also for voltage. Uh, this is not allowed in, in all of the countries in Europe, so this mm. must, be, must be developed. I would also like to highlight here, of course, the role uh, and the responsibility of the market participants. And here, the regulator, together with the European Commission and others, can do a lot because we need to further define the DSO in relation to the market, mm. all the new market uh, participants, and also the DSO in relation to, to the TSO. So uh, there is um, a lot of uh, uh, changes that, that needs to be done here in order to, to bring this forward. And I would like to highlight that the DSOs, they are committed. Uh, EDSO for smart grids, uh, uh, we can see that all the DSOs in Europe, they are committed and they are mm, just waiting for the possibility to, to bring this on. In this newly emerging market environment, we also have different new tasks like, for instance, advanced meter operation or data handling. Do you think that these tasks should be under the responsibility of DSOs? Yes, I definitely, I definitely think so. Uh, of course, the basis for the DSO, the core uh, for the DSO, is to see to it that the lights are kept on. Mm. Th that means secure uh, energy supply and stable networks. But with this development and with the DSO as a very important uh, 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 entity here in this development, the role must develop. So, first of all, uh, making the DSO a real system operator that has the possibility to really balance also locally uh, between demand and supply in order to take care of the problems of uh, bottlenecks and voltage and so forth. But also to make this uh, electricity market in Europe uh, come together, there is a need to develop the retail market and we haven't seen that yet big focus has been on the wholesale market and in the retail market there is a need for a facilitator to make to make a level playing field for all the different parties uh, in the market and that is perfect for the neutral and regulated DSO take into account here for example data looking at the development of for example uh, android phones or the uh, iPhones with all the apps there is a need to make data available if the consumer wants. The consumer owns his data. But this is very important. Open, uh, open access, uh, open and, and protocols and interfaces. And we believe that, that the DSOs are perfect to store and to handle this data and to make it secure and also to make it very cost efficient. So this is, this is very, very important. Uh, I believe, also taking into account that only two countries have decided in the rollout of the smart meters that the DSOs should not be in charge of, of that, uh, while all the rest are going along uh, looking at the DSO as the main, main player here. I would also like to highlight, for example, electric vehicles and the, the extreme need to push this development uh, as good as we can. And here, of course, the DSO is very important to take into account all the flows of electricity. And especially with fast charging, this would be quite a lot uh, of flexibility. So to take that into account to the active management system, but also to give the DSOs the possibility to own and roll out and manage public charging spots. Because there is a chicken and egg problem mm -hmm. here. And if there are no spots, there will be no cars. And if there are, uh, uh, if there are no cars, there is no business case mm -hmm. to, s to put up the, the charging spots. Um, of course, there is also an important role in the smart cities where the grids are extremely important and, and for example, energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. But just to, to mention a couple of things, uh, this is very important. It was a pleasure talking to you, Per Olof. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.